Hi, and welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Jess Botic, and today I have the absolute pleasure of interviewing the CEO and MD of Australian Rare Earths, Travis Benke. So the ASX ticker code is AR3, and Travis is not only a client, but also a dear friend. So it's great to have you on the show, Travis. Thanks, Jess. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, welcome back. So, Travis, before um, we get started uh, with some of the more deeper questions, I thought maybe we could have a bit of a brief overview of the company for our small caps audience that isn't familiar with AR3. Yeah, sure. Happy to do so. I'll keep it pretty brief. Um, but uh, at AR3, we're developing a portfolio of energy transition metal projects. Uh, and, and right now that consists of uranium and rare earth projects We've got a more advanced rare earth project at Copper Murrah, and that's an ionic clay deposit in the southeast of South Australia. And over the last few years, we've been um, defining a large resource. We've developed a flow sheet. Uh, we've done a, a bunch of baseline environmental studies. Uh, so the project's really well placed to advance to the next stage of studies and approvals. We've also got some early stage rare earth um, exploration projects in North Queensland and we've recently expanded into uranium. So we've got the Overland, Triggs Bore and Hamilton Creek projects here in South Australia and we're targeting sedimentary hosted uranium deposits. Fantastic. Thanks, Travis. And now, so burning question, there's been a major uptick in the share price uh, this week. So I didn't want to steal your thunder and ask you to give our audience uh, the reason for why that is the case. Yeah, I guess it's been, a, like you know, it's been a pretty tough time for junior explorers. Um, the market conditions haven't, haven't been great. So it's um, quite refreshing to have some, I guess, positive uh, announcements with uh, demonstrating that the team's doing a lot of good work and, and to have that rewarded um, over the last week or two has been, been quite good. So there's been two key releases um, that, that's um, led to this over the last couple of weeks. So firstly, uh, we announced uh, for our Overland Uranium project that we received the second of our EPEPA approvals from the South Australian government to commence drilling. And we also announced that we've secured a drilling rig, which will look to start uh, operations in mid-October. Um, Overland's a, a frontier uranium play, and so it's quite exciting. There's no historic drilling um, targeting uranium in our in our project area, and we've got a really significant uh, foothold there. We've got almost 3,000 square kilometres, uh, and the approvals that we receive uh, uh, for an area to the west of the, the project, um, which is about 700 square kilometres, and it allows us to get onto the ground quite quickly to drill some of our high-priority targets. So looking at planning uh, or looking at drilling 5,000 metres between mid-October and Christmas this year. So that was the first announcement. And then the second one, um, we provided the market an update um, at Copper Murrah with a significant mineral resource update for the project. Uh, so key highlights there for, for that uh, update was that we increased the mineral resource by 27% to now stand at 236 million tonnes, grading 748 ppm TREO. Uh, with that, we have also identified some high-grade tonnes. So we've got nearly 70 million tonnes grading over 1,000 ppm, um, and that was a pretty significant increase on the last uh, update. And what it does is it highlights the potential for initial higher-grade areas of the resource for um, our development plan. So some of that infield drilling is really now nicely um, looking uh, or identifying a northwest trend across um, and that's continuous of higher grade mineralization with the resource um, so we're certainly spending some time looking at that in addition to, to the high grade and the, and the resource update we also had some geographic uh, extent uh, extensions of the of the resource so we drilled um, further to the north of, of the resource and within the areas that we drilled we've been able to add another 25 million tons uh, and I guess overall what the what the resource update continues to demonstrate is that we've got you know a significant opportunity to continue to grow the resource over time because it's open to the north and to the south 
And the current 236 million tonnes only sits on uh, around 2% 2, 2 of that, um, of our project area at Copper Murrah, given that we've got some 7,000 square kilometres of tenure. So those are probably the two key announcements more recently that um, have uh, brought that positivity back into the stock. Yeah, fantastic, Travis. That's that's really great news. Okay, so let's break it into two parts because those are two really big pieces of of, um, of news flow. So let's start with Overland. Now, Overland shares some geological uh, similarities with Ren with the Renmark Group and areas um, that host Boss Energy's uranium operations. So I suppose the question is, you know, what level of confidence does does your team have in terms of making a potential uranium discovery given this highly prospective area that the company is is looking to explore very soon? Yeah, we're, we're pretty excited to start exploration in what really is a frontier uranium play. Like I said, where there's been no uh, drilling targeting uranium um, historically. So we, we believe that the area has all the characteristics to host a, a sedimentary hosted uranium deposit that can be um, ISR amenable. So we've got the, the source rocks nearby. Um, we've got airborne radiometric um, showing that movement of uranium in modern drainage systems into the basin. We've got historic drilling that identifies the right sediments of, as potential hosts for, for uranium. And there's also the appropriate trapping mechanisms where it's possible to concentrate uranium into a, into a deposit. So our initial prospectivity study um, of, of this new uranium province has identified uh, you know, a number of high priority targets right across our significant 3,000 square kilometre um, tenure. And we obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're really targeting uh, some of those high priority areas in that initial 700 kilometre um, square kilometre area to the southwest of the tenure, um, which is really quite exciting because it still leaves us lots of ground and targets to test in, in future exploration programs. Yeah, fantastic, Travis. Travis. So now the estimated timeline. So you mentioned starting to drill in October, but can you explain to us, you know, when can the market start to see some updates on results? Um, you mentioned two e-papers that you've got approved. So you're going to be starting some high priority targets um, in the first uh, area. And then where are you going to move after that? Yeah, so it's, it's actually pretty exciting to think how close close it is now um, with all the hard work that's gone into it with the, with the team. So we'll be mobilising the drill rig to site in mid-October. Uh, we plan for this initial program to drill around 5,000 metres, targeting some of those high-priority targets in that uh, in that western portion of, of the project area. Uh, we expect the drilling to be completed before Christmas this year. And so we'll be providing some regular updates um, with results over over the next two or three months uh, as we make make progress. Um, so, like I said, we'll we'll, tar we'll target the that western portion of the tenure where we've been able to get early access through so through our engagement efforts. Um, the the rest of the the tenure uh, is uh, a little bit longer as far as the regulatory approvals required to access uh, tenure with some. Uh, with some notification periods required for native title consultation and the like, so uh, we expect that process to run through into the into the early part of next year, enabling us to drill test some of those targets middle of next year. But in between now and then, we've got lots of uh, lots of ground to cover, lots of targets uh, to get started on, and yeah, really looking forward to get uh, getting going uh, in you know, a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's very exciting, Travis. Now, this is sort of a macro question, uh, just on a uranium. So, you know, really interesting global uranium market dynamics um, at the moment that we've seen in the last sort of 12 months in particular. How does AR3 sort of assess um, the long-term viability at Overland, given these kind of macro dynamics? Yeah, our view, you know, around the long-term fundamentals in uranium space really robust. I think the, the long-term demand growth for uranium will, you know, it's going to continue to be driven by that clean energy transition as, you know, many countries around the world turn to nuclear energy as part of their clean energy mix, uh, as part of their solution moving forward as they decarbonise. 
And I guess if you look at the supply side, there's really been a massive underinvestment in new mine supply over the last decade. And, and coupled with the extensive time to bring new supply into production, we expect to see strong uranium prices um, over, over the future um, months and, and years. So given our long-term view on the commodity, we think that the market will be supportive of new exploration projects in frontier uranium provinces like, like Overland. Yeah, absolutely. And given we've got a bit of an energy crisis, I think not just in Australia, but globally, and particularly in in Europe, um, uranium uh, is certainly a really interesting commodity to watch now and into the future. Um, so, Travis, just moving back to Copamara. So the company's just announced uh, an updated uh, mineral resource estimate. Um, but as you mentioned, it only covers a really small portion of Copamara. Uh, so I think it's 2%. Um, so can you elaborate on the company's exploration plans over there um, and also expand on the mineral resource and particularly the high-grade subset of the resource? Yeah, so... Yeah, we like you said, we've now got 236 million tonnes. It sits on only 2% of our of our tenure area, given that we've got 7,000 square kilometres of, of tenure within, within the project area. Um, we've also got an exploration target that ranges from 500 million tonnes to, to 3.2 billion tonnes. So there's really compelling scope for ongoing mineral resource growth um, with the with the deposits still open to the north and, and south. Um, what we've, I guess, started to unpack and, and more recently we've defined that higher grade subset of the resource and and what infill drilling has defined, that, you know, that northwest trend uh, of continuous higher grade mineralisation. And, and why that is important to us is as we start to think about our future um, development plans, uh, we then can now see a real opportunity to, to target and develop those higher grade, high value parts of the resource first. So that's where we'll continue to focus on as we think about um, our development plans, our approvals and, and getting stage one of the project up uh, in, into the future. Yeah, absolutely, Travis. And, you know, given, you know, Rare earths, most rare earths is, um, is exported out of China um, and rare earths is a critical mineral. So I um, actually just wanted to touch base a little bit on some of the government R&D that you've, that you've received um, from the government um, in terms of tax rebates, but also talk a little bit about your flow sheet um, and the network is around that you've been doing um, on Copamara on your rare earths project. So particularly in terms of um, how you're looking at improving uh, cost uh, reductions and also efficiencies um, with some of the technological advancements um, potentially that you might be reviewing at the moment. Yeah, sure. So I guess firstly on the R&D side of things, because of the nature of the, the work that we've been doing on the project, we've been able to apply for and, and successfully granted um, the R&D rebate, so a portion of the spend on research and development in the project um, enables us to get a, a cash rebate on, on that spend. So uh, we've actually got a, our um, FY24 claim uh, has, been, uh, has been lodged and that, that will uh, enable us a, a refund, a cash refund of around $700,000 uh, which we expect to, to receive in, in, the, in this current quarter. Uh, from, a, I guess, a project perspective and thinking about how we most efficiently uh, extract uh, the, the resource um, and, and think about that from a, not only a cost effectiveness uh, perspective, but from a sustainability perspective. Uh, earlier this year, we uh, announced that we were moving to a heap leach development approach, a progressive heap leach development approach. And some of the key benefits of, of our approach compared to a tank leach, which is what most bionic clay projects tend to adopt, is that under in our setting with our approach, um, it will enable us to significantly lower the, the capital cost and, the, and also the technical risk that goes with um, with the tank leach approach, but also compared to some of the hard rock deposits around the world. Um, so that's going to be a real significant key advantage for, for the project. 
What it will also allow us to do is to uh, target the higher grade resource in a scalable stage satellite development approach, which we think will help create value. And then from a sustainability perspective, um, this approach will allow us to reduce um, and significantly lower the amount of water used on the project, um, as well as a significant reduction in power. And it will also enable uh, a more, um, I guess, in enhance the characteristics for progressive land rehabilitation with how uh, the clay, um, the characteristics of the clay as they um, have been gone through the heat leach, leach cleaned and, and then into rehabilitation. So uh, the the new flow sheet um, that we've de- that we've decided to go with um, the work that we've also done around baseline environmental studies, the resource definition, which we've spoken about. I guess it places us really well to advance the project into that next phase of studies and, and approvals. So the project's set up well. Yeah, that certainly sounds it, Travis, because you've got, you know, a new updated resource, you've got a massive exploration target still, heaps of land to, still to explore um, to uh, prove up even more resource if you wanted to. Um, your flow sheet you're working on, you're getting R&D tax rebates from the government, Um so what's next at Copamara? Yes, so I guess in the short time, what we're short term, sorry, what we're, we're most excited about is the, the first drill program at, at Overland. So kicking off this mid this month in a, in a frontier uranium play. Uh, we're, we're well funded. So uh, we've got, we had just under $8 million at the end of June, the last reporting period. So it means we can make meaningful, meaningful progress on, on our projects. Uh, and really, you know, we're, we're building a portfolio of energy transition metal projects, which provides us, I guess, the the optionality and flexibility to create values through advancing a number of projects at any one time. I think uranium and rare earths, um, they're attractive commodities in the long term, strategically important, uh, and we've really built the team that can del- deliver both on exploration but also on project development uh, in these types of projects with the experienced team, Scott. So I think there's lots to like about AR3 moving forward and, and we're excited to see what uh, what comes next. Thanks so much, Travis. You stole my last question by answering it already, which was all of those key investment highlights. So great team, diversified portfolio of uh, critical minerals, really, uranium and rare earths, uh, and uh, fully funded, and not to mention your uh, tax rebate that you'll be getting uh, in the next couple of months too, hopefully. Well, yes, I think that is. <laughs> yeah, that's just the time, yeah. Fantastic, Travis. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, It's always great to see you and in a different context. And yeah, we look forward to uh, seeing some further updates and hopefully even more uptick in the share price. Thanks. Thanks, Jess. And thanks to Smallcats for having us.